Hey everybody, welcome to the Joe Jaguar Show again. Today I got a friend, guest here today, and his name is Mario. Yeah. And what we're gonna be doing today is Mario has a six inch F8 Acromat, which I've probably owned at least four, maybe five uh, minimum. Um, and they're very good scopes. Now you had something even way bigger, right? Yes. And it was just too big for you? Yeah, it was, it was very heavy, right? Right. So have you have you used this guy yet? Yes, on the moon. Okay, on the moon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare it against EvoStar. They're basically the identical scope, except the EvoStar has a one element DD. But besides that, they're the same focal ratio, 1200 millimeter focal length and F8. So it's basically exactly the same, even the same weight, same tube, everything's practically the same. So we're gonna be using the same powers and I've never tested in the Acromat and the six inch AD, just to see, you like side by side, to see what the difference will be. So are you prepared to see, now mind you Mario, once you, if you see a big difference, hopefully he doesn't go crazy and is like, nah, I gotta sell this shit and get something, <laughs> like an AD, you know. But anyway, we're gonna set up, we're gonna balance and stuff like that, and then we're gonna take a look at Jupiter Saturn, catch you guys in a bit. Okay, Mario, we're gonna play a little game here right now. Yeah. So, you have a 50 millimeter, 56 millimeter two inch eyepiece. Yeah. I got a 32. So your field of view is actually twice the size of mine, because you've got a lower power eyepiece. So, we're gonna see who can find Jupiter first, on a count of three. You remember how to loosen it, right? Yeah. So loosen it here, with that clutch, and then that clutch, and now it's free. Once you um, put it on Jupiter, so we're gonna start at the home position. We'll, uh, yeah, just to make it more fun for the video, we're going to, ready, we're gonna, three, two, one, go. Found it. If you want, you can, you can confirm. Okay, there we go. We should have actually bet for something, but that's okay. We'll do it next time. At a 32 millimeter eyepiece, I don't see too much detail. How many moons do you see? I don't see one moon on each side. Same here. Okay, the others are probably behind. Okay, let's crank up the power now. Okay, I'll let you put an 18 millimeter eyepiece in there. Okay. Once you put the adapter back on. I don't know if you can see the one star, Mario. It's on the right side. It's just touching the planet. Yeah, yeah there's three. Wow, it's like really touching. Yeah. Did you see it on that one? Yeah. That's kind of neat. When, so we couldn't see it a second ago. It's sharp. It's nice. Actually, I can see lots of banding on yours. I do see the false color there. I don't know if you want to take it. Let me look. It's a little bit of a purplish glow. Oh, yeah. What's funny though, I kind of see like a halo around this one where I don't see it on yours. Yeah, I see the color difference. I mean, it's not that big. Yeah, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. I don't think that'd be a deal killer for me. But you see how that star is just touching the planet. Okay, let's pump up the power. Put a three millimeter on there. Now remember, we only gave it like a 15 minute cooling tank. I'm going to go to six millimeter instead of a four. Are you looking for? This is the three. Three? Okay. I think it's too high. Where's the okay. three? Right here. Yep. Yeah. And then I'll put the cap. So three is too high. Why don't you go to a five? I don't know. Something is not 100% right to me because it looks like I have a, like a little bit of a glare on this one. And I don't, I don't see a glare on yours. So it could be that mine needs more cool down time. Maybe. You have what power? That's uh, five, right? Five, okay, five gets us 240 power. I mean, yeah, I can see several bands on there. Jupiter and Saturn are not, like the past are prime now. Mario, this is why if we didn't observe these planets now, it would be too late. This is a nice view. Okay, we take a look at this guy. I 
two. I'm going to bump up the power one more to a five. Saturn can take a lot of power. I want you to view Saturn and tell me what you think. Wow. No problem, Eric. Wow, it looks great. It's pretty good, eh? Yeah. Shall we find this button? Ah, maybe I just have a little bit more experience, but that's okay. A lot more. Ah, don't worry about it. Okay, Saturn is high contrast, so we should be able to see. We should be able to see what your scope can do. Look, look at this one, and tell me what you think. It's almost the same power, and it's slowly drifting. And that's what your scope. I mean, it looks fairly good to me. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I see a little bit better image quality in this one, but yours is not too far behind. Maybe if you had, once you get your new dual speed focuser, I think that will help you fine tune it, like in the focusing. Yeah, I think so. But I can see an equatorial band on Saturn. I can see the Cassini division just barely. Yeah, it looks pretty good on this one, too. Yeah, it's not bad, man. Okay, Mario, you ready? I'm putting a three millimeter on this guy. Okay. Okay, tell me what you think of that. 400 power. And this guy, what's it doing? Well, that's not bad. It's a little smaller, but it's pretty sharp on here. Yeah, it is. I, I can see that equatorial band. I can kind of see... Um, the Cassini division, but because it's not rock solid, uh, it's just a little blurry, but I, I can definitely see it. Now, it depends how used to you are observing at this fine detail. But you know, on Saturn, the color fringing is not bad at all. Jupiter, I saw a little bit more. I mean, that's pretty good. I think if any new, if you were to show anybody this image, I think that would blow them away. Yeah. Sure. What do you think of that guy at 400 power? It's, uh, it's it's very good shaky though. Yeah, yeah, and then I agree with you. Yeah. Now, Mario, tell me, like when I'm looking at the planet, I can see like a little bit of a shadow on the planet causing on the ring, right? You have to kind of look for that shadow, try to stay still. Yep. It's like the planet's casting a little bit of a shadow on the ring, just yep. wh where it's almost touching. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. You know what? Let's. What do you conclude? What would your conclusion tonight? Just I, Jupiter and Saturn. I think the colors is better on that one. But only on Jupiter. The color. Yes. The color correction on yours on Saturn. There's no false color at all. That's right. Right? That's right. So it's not bad at all. It was only on Jupiter I saw some, but on Jupiter I saw it flaring a little, like a that's halo. Right. So I think it's because of the cool down time. So yes. that's the one downfall of this guy because we didn't let them cool. Now they're probably getting cooler. Yes. But uh, today it's uh, what? There is some fringing. Yeah, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. And today is November the 5th. So it is kind of right. cool and we just took them out. Uh, we looked at Venus with a 80, mil 80 millimeter ED, let them cool, but we only let them cool down for 15 minutes. Yeah, so it wasn't right. enough for this size, but I definitely, I would say, uh, remember two guys, this, this Acromat here, six inch brand new, would probably be about 1300 bucks. And that guy's 3600 bucks. Both I'm saying tax in. So it's a uh, $2,000 difference. That's right. Right? So I think for you new guys out there, if you want a large refractor that you don't need to call a mate and worry about the mirrors and misaligning, as long as you can give it at least 30 minutes uh, cool down time, it'll give you good color correction, good image quality. Saturn and Jupiter look pretty good on there. Yeah. Uh, if you don't mind the fringing, I think it's a good buy. Now, of course, if you have more money and the fringing does bother you, then sure, go for something like that. Uh, it already comes with the dual speed focuser, but today's the first day I noticed it's starting to like it's slip. yeah, it's starting to slip a bit, of, you know, and I haven't noticed that before. So I don't know if it's because getting older or the cold, 
is making the, the lube a little uh, less sticky, I guess. But um, yeah, that's our quick, uh, our quick rundown. So if you guys have to, and you want to use a six inch refractor, I would say it's pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah. That's it. Hopefully, any other words, uh, Mary, you want to tell no. the viewers here? Uh, I would just say just get out there and uh, look at something, the moon or like anything. Yeah, have fun. Just get out there, yeah. I mean, Venus is approaching. Uh, it's actually, as the weeks and the next month go by, it's going to keep getting better and better. So I'm going to show you guys uh, Venus when it's a little bit better, uh, higher altitude. And I think me and you are going to do another video again. Yeah. Sure. This time we're going to bring an 8-inch SCT go-to, and we're going to try to find Neptune and Uranus, and we're going to actually show it to you guys on the camera itself. But because we're in a white zone, uh, I can't find the, the stars or the constellations uh, to actually manually find them, so we're going to use a go-to. And uh, that's it. Joe Jaguar, like, comment, subscribe. Out.